The summit, I'm joined live via Skype from Sharm El Sheikh by Heather Murdoch, VOA Middle Hello. East correspondent. Hello, Heather. Hello. Um, we just have a few days left, Heather, uh, with the conference there in Egypt, and the delegates don't seem to be clear on the way forward. What are the dividing issues? There are two major issues still on the table, and they are the most important issues at this conference. Uh, the most contentious is the issue of a loss and damage fund. Uh, developing countries and China have called for a new kind of fund to for, to, for wealthy countries, to pay for developing countries who are suffering from climate change disasters. And as you know, it's usually the people who are the poorest, rural people, people in South Asia and Africa, that are on the front lines of climate change. And this still has not been established. It also hasn't been quite established if they are going to keep to the goal of keeping global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, or they are going to say we cannot make that goal. You know, Heather, today uh, we saw a little bit of video clips about uh, Pre Brazilian president-elect Da Silva uh, being given a, a rousing welcome there in Sharm El Sheikh. What is he pledging to do uh, to change the, cri the climate crisis? Yes, uh, Lula, as he is known, arrived here today and spoke just, just a few minutes ago. He finished sp speaking, and this is not only his uh, re-entrance onto the world stage, he is saying this is Brazil's re-entrance into the climate change action world. His predecessor, the current president, Bolsonaro, um, is a climate skeptic and has overseen some of the worst deforestation of the Amazon rainforest in living memory. So we are hoping that he, as he has called for, to end deforestation, will gather the international support and the support he needs at home, which is complicated. So there's a long road to go, but it, for climate change watchers, it was a really good step that hopefully today will begin to restart the idea of saving the Amazon rainforest. One of the things, Heather, we've heard over the past couple of days is uh, the African uh, uh, delegates uh, talking about not being responsible, the continent not being responsible for greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, what is being said in response to their point of view? This is the great issue of this conference. And I think from a moral level, I think everyone agrees. I mean, the African continent is not responsible for the emissions that are warming the globe to what could be the unlivable levels in 100 years. Um, but they, people on the African continent are often the ones suffering the most from it. So, of course, everyone agrees that that is absolutely unfair. And the calls for reparations and the calls for money to prepare communities for climate change disasters have been heard. They're on the agenda here. But what's very disappointing is that so far they just remain on the agenda. There is not 